Hi and welcome to Frasha Talks. My name is Manfred and in this episode we are going to have a look at the various possible architectures of the FADC and some of their main features. The flexibility of the FADC allows the system to be tailored in accordance with specific project requirements to ensure the most efficient project realization. If you have watched the previous Frauscher Talks episodes about the FADC, you will notice that the same principles are continuously applied to create the various architectures. Let's start with a simple centralized architecture. In essence, it consists of only adding standard FADC detection points and selecting ABs for the actual counting until the whole railway network is covered. In the example on the picture, we are using the failsafe Ethernet interface for the communication to a digital interlocking. A modular architecture uses the same principle. In every FADC location, we can place as many detection points as needed and further connect to the detached FADC locations through a communication board and Ethernet. In that example, the COM serves as both the communication unit between the FADCs and the digital interlocking via failsafe protocols. A combination of the two mentioned architectures is certainly also possible. Connecting decentralized locations to a centralized location through Ethernet is a very common method of reducing the amount of signaling cable. In this example, all the information which is gathered is centralized output through relays of the IOXP boards and interfaced to the centralized relay interlocking system. In some cases, although the overall availability of a single system is already very high, a fully redundant system is needed. With the FADC, no other special arrangements are required. It basically features a doubling of all components, which ultimately comes down to the configuration of the system. A smarter way to carry out the redundancy is to only double up the points which could have a bigger impact on the railway network. In order to minimize the possible impact of a single point of failure, the FADC offers the option to double up essential points like power supply and communication. Next to all the various architecture possibilities, a wide range of inbuilt features can be activated. Features which smartly increase the availability and reliability to guarantee a more efficient operation, ease installation activities or help to protect maintenance workers. The FADC offers two fully automated smart features to tolerate external influences. With these features, the Excel counting system is able to safely differentiate between external disturbances and regular trains. One of those features is called counting head control, in short CHC. Here, the system itself knows if there is a regular train on one of the adjacent sections of every detection point. If there aren't any trains, the system can enable the counting head control mode for those detection points. If a disturbance occurs, for example due to maintenance, the system is able to differentiate this from a regular train traversing and therefore suppresses the disturbance. The second feature is called Supervisor Track Sections, in short STS. Due to the flexibility and internal communication capabilities of the FADC, virtual overlaying track sections can be evaluated. If now an external disturbance, for example due to maintenance, causes an error, multiple track sections will go into the failsafe state. However, not all overlapping sections are usually impacted. So this information can be safely used by the system to correct such faults. Due to the failsafe clear state of the track section STS2, the system is allowed to conduct automated top-down resets and consequently bottom-up resets. After the procedure, 
the system was able to fix itself safely. Another feature of the FEDC is the possibility to activate maintenance by means of an external signal either input via the IOXB or through a fail-safe Ethernet protocol like the Frausch-safe Ethernet. This feature allows the operator to remotely switch certain areas of the railway network to occupied in order to ensure safety of their maintenance personnel. Additionally, an inbuilt track section synchronization feature can be configured in order to internally synchronize two track sections to only one logical output. This may be relevant for redundant systems in order to automatically synchronize two redundant track sections. This could avoid the duplication of the wiring work or it could simplify the logic in the higher ranking system, as the Excel counting system takes over the logical synchronization of the track sections. As you already heard, the IOXB board provides all necessary track section output and input interfaces. It offers three different reset inputs, which can be freely configured for each of the two track sections. The following reset behaviors are possible. Direct reset, preparatory reset, conditional reset, or even a combination of the above. In summary, there are plenty of possibilities in terms of architectures and also features. If you would like to know more about the features or reset commands, I highly recommend you to watch the corresponding Frasha Talks episodes. Thank you guys for tuning in again and see you in the next episodes of Frasha Talks.